Today we're going to be tying a uh, little bit of a modified version using a couple new materials um, for a classic pattern, the pheasant tail. Great fish catching mayfly pattern. Um, lakes and rivers doesn't make too much of a difference. I think you can travel the world pretty much with a handful of pheasant tails and expect to catch fish pretty much wherever you go with a trout swim. So we've got a size 12, 37, 61, an eighth uh, inch gold bead. Got brown six aught uni thread. I'm just gonna lay a nice foundation thread wrap all the way down the shank. So some things will be the same on the pheasant tail, some things will be a little bit different. Trim off my excess. Classic pheasant tail feathers. Just gonna go in there, pull off probably five or six actual fibers. So just kind of make sure all those tips are on the even side. I'll measure the tail out to be the same length as the hook shank. So I'll measure holding with my dominant hand, make a little pinch with my non-dominant hand so that I know where my tie-in point is. I'm going to secure that with a wrap or two. I don't know if you can see it on camera, but I'll make a wrap or two on the left-hand side from a tire's perspective and then make a couple wraps on the right-hand side just to make sure that it's really secure in there. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take some brassy size copper wire and I'm going to lay that down the entire shank. So the wire serves a couple functions. Um, a, it reinforces a relatively fragile feather material. B, it uh, adds segmentation which I think is going to help you know, trigger responses from the fish. So what I'll do usually is I'll take my hackle clips just secure all of those pheasant tail feathers and then I'll just wrap that up the hook shank to about the halfway maybe just a little bit past the halfway mark. Keep the body sparse that's one of the things I really like about this pattern is that you can have a really fine bodied mayfly representation I think that's important. If you're fishing this thing in the winter you drop this down to a 18 or 20 even and Absol keep it super small. Absolutely. May have some issues with one of the steps in there in the real small sizes, but you know, for around fishing around here in the Mackenzie Willamette Valley, um, this is a great bug to represent the March Browns, um, which even you know in December or whatever are still kind of around a little bit, getting ready to do their thing, getting bigger each day. I'm going to counterwind this uh, copper wire, help reinforce and segment. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take um, some pheasant tail. So this stuff's got really cool markings on it, and it's one of those things like that you have in your in your fly tying arsenal that you may or may not use all that often. But this is a good way to kind of you know consume some of the feathers that otherwise you, you may not use. Um, this stuff's real wide and webby, unlike the last stuff, so it's going to make for a better wing case. So I'll just kind of come in. See all that beautiful stifling in there. I'm going to cut off a piece that's probably about an eighth of an inch wide. If you cut too much, you can always subtract a little bit like I'm doing now. So there's two sides to these materials. One's usually a little bit brighter than the other. Uh, more coloration, a little bit darker coloration. What I'm going to do is I'm going to tie the light side or the glossier side of the feather down onto the shank so that when we flip it back we're going to have that awesome coloration in there. So uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I've got a bit of Life Flex, which is a spandex material um, which is really kind of neat to tie with um, especially for guys who are getting ready for like a summertime uh, run of, of fishing. Um, traditional rubber legs tend to not last very well. They're also really susceptible to UV radiation so a lot of times you'll tie up a bunch of flies I'm sitting around your box bouncing around inside your boat. When you go to pull one out you look at it, the rubber legs are all curled up. Life Flex doesn't do that so I'm going to tie in a short section right there in the thorax. Do one of those on each side. I'm just tying them in right in the middle of that section for legs. 
So again, for like something like a March Brown that has really prominent leg features, it's going to be a kind of a cool little deal. I'm going to take my thread back to the back of the, uh, the thorax section there. Uh, a new, relatively new color of uh, ice dub here in the pheasant tail. Ice dub is awesome stuff to work with. It's super easy to dub. Um, it comes in a huge range of colorations, both you know standard colors and UV. Um, if you haven't tied with it yet, do yourself a favor, treat yourself to tying with it because it's really nice. Got a little bit of sparkle to it, but also great coloration. We'll start a little dubbing noodle. Dub up a little sliver there. Just kind of move those back legs aside for a second. So this kind of helps eliminate like on a flashback pheasant tail where you'd be tying in some uh, uh, flashaboo or something like that over the wing case. It's going to just kind of save you a step. You got the sparkle built right in. You can see I've dubbed up a thorax which is approximately twice the size of the abdomen. Next step I'm going to do is just take that, uh, that pheasant rump feather there with the real webby feathers that we're using as the wing case and just tie it forward. Make sure those legs are out of the way so that you're not uh, beating them down too bad. Snip off the excess. Um, I don't think that it matters too much to the fish but I've got just a little bit of space there that I can kind of close up. I'll just take the last little snippet there off the table, what I didn't use of the ice dub. I'll just make a couple wraps right there behind the bead. Nice way of finishing it off. Probably trim down my legs just a little tiny bit too. A whip finish first. Now if you wanted to kind of give that copper john or bar look to it, you could you could do a drop a UV glue on the top of that or absolutely yeah like a, a poxy back type type of situation which will, is going to help with sink rate and that, that uv glue is awesome stuff for doing exactly that so like i said i'll just trim back the legs just a little tiny bit make it a little bit more mayfly representative and there you have a completed uh, modified pheasant tail as you can see, pretty easy to tie. Um, got moving legs on there, a little bit of UV flash, easy to do. One of my favorites, hope it's one of yours too.